This is the Coconino Sandstone, uh, probably the, the biggest cliff and most prominent layer in the Grand Canyon, uh, at least from the top down. So we can see in the distance there, this, this first wide band of lighter colored rock. This is all the Coconino Sandstone, kind of this kind of buff colored unit. Uh, it's a sandstone, it's all pretty equally grain sand sizes. Um, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about the how to identify the Coconino sandstone, some of the um, characteristics of it, and kind of show you the regional geology and the context in which this layer was laid down in the Grand Canyon. Uh, I think it's one of my favorite layers. It's very photogenic, very scenic, helps you keep track of where you are in the canyon. If you're heading down and you hit the Coconino sandstone, you know you've not gone that far really. Uh, and if you're coming up, you know you're, you're getting close. And so the, the end is in sight. If we kind of wheel around this way, we can actually see uh, the uppermost layer there is the Kaibab limestone, which is somewhat similar in color to the Coconino sandstone, but the Kaibab limestone uh, is a little bit more ledgy, um, has a lot more horizontal like bands and, and ledges to it, um, and a different rock type. Um, and you can see it's not nearly as thick as the Coconino sandstone. So let's start out with our kind of regional context here. Uh, we've got a nice little paleogeographic map for you. And the Coconino sandstone uh, is from about 275 or so million years ago. And at that time, uh, all the continents were stuck together to form this big supercontinent Pangaea. And here we have Arizona. This is Utah, Nevada, California. So this is the southwestern U.S. if you can't see the state borders. So the Grand Canyon region would be right about here on this map. And this map shows in, in yellow areas of uh, where there were a lot of sand dune uh, complexes. And so we can see uh, there was pretty extensive dune fields. There was kind of a, a eroded highland here in Colorado. This is what we call the ancestral Rockies um, that had kind of eroded down. But mainly our setting for the Coconino sandstone is a very dry environment uh, near the equator and one in which uh, the sea wasn't too far away, but we had these big uh, expansive sand dune complexes. And the Coconino sandstone is a pretty formidable unit. It's around, I think it's around 400 feet thick, something like that. Again, kind of equal grains of sand deposited there. Um, if you look at it up close, um, yeah, the grains are, it, it kind of has that sandy feel to it, uh, like sandpaper, and the grains are all pretty much equal in size. Um, it is pretty thinly bedded, but probably one of the more characteristic features in this sandstone, along with other sandstones we see in the southwestern U.S., are what are called cross beds. So if we look over here, we can kind of see that the, the, the layering, the lines, kind of goes at different angles. There's kind of one coming up this way, but then there's a nice sharp line uh, just right behind the, the trees there, kind of horizontal. Uh, and then we can see that it kind of comes up at other angles. And so the rocks here are all horizontally layered. We can see that as we look across part of the canyon here. We can see that the, the dominant layering is horizontal, but these inclined layers like you see down here exist because this area was deposited in the sand dune. And if you think of a sand dune, um, a sand dune has, I'm going to see if I have a, a pinion here that I could draw. Here we go. Okay, so, so I think this will help a little bit. So if we think of a sand dune, uh, a sand dune typically has kind of a gentle side and a steep side. And the wind blows in this direction. And as the wind blows, it carries all the little sand grains up the dune. They skip, they bounce, they jump to the top of the dune. But when they get to the top of the dune, they sort of settle here on this protected side of the dune. Uh, they're protected from the wind. So they start to accumulate right here. And as they accumulate, eventually it produces a steeper slope. And then occasionally what can happen is the sand being so steep on this slope fails and forms a little avalanche of sand. Um, but all the while it's maintaining this this angle here. This is what we call the angle of repose. So then we get more sand moving up the dunes, accumulating on the backside, and then another little avalanche of sand. So the whole dune is moving downwind. And what these are, so these are basically little avalanches on the backside of the dune, and these get preserved in the rock record as these crossbeds, as these uh, layers that 
run counter to the main bedding surface within the unit. And so what's cool about these is we can actually look at cross beds and uh, figure out which way the wind was blowing when the sand was uh, being deposited at that time. Uh, so pretty remarkable. So this Coconino sandstone, really, uh, um, uh, really unique layer in the Grand Canyon. One of the more, um, you know, it's a layer that you can easily pick out and it's really distinctive. Um, yeah, and so that's the story of the Coconino sandstone here in Grand Canyon.